Hi, everybody. Happy Sunday and happy World's Laugh today. I hope you guys are having a great day filled with lots of laugh and lots of ab workout and lots of joy. And in the midst of all of that, we're bringing more reasons for you to just really experience the best version of yourself with this series of transformation stories. And on these series, if you haven't missed, if you haven't watched the first one, please go and check out the one we did on Friday. Um, but we're really here with one pure intention, which is how do you get access to becoming the most optimal, best version of yourself? Not in comparison to anybody else, but purely you versus you, where you get to experience joy in this moment. And it is my great honor today to have a dear, dear friend, a soul brother, Shaquille Harani on with us. Hey, Shaquille, welcome. He is dialing in from London. Thrilled to have you on board. Hi, Ambika. How are you doing? It's great to be I here. Really great and so awesome. So who's Shaq? Uh, a quick introduction for him. And this short paragraph really doesn't capture uh, the like half of it, but we're going to we're going to, in the interest of time, be uh, brief. Shaq, who's just turned 40, is an optometrist. He's the director of three opticians businesses. He's trekked across the world, a real avid mountaineer. He is the president of multiple charities. He's a student mentor and a trainee. And in the FitBank world, he's been a FitBanker coach, a senior season FitBanker coach. He also, as of last year, took on um, the Global Food Banker Adventures and Trek Leads Accountability. And he has taken our Trek's arm, our adventure arm across different continents, across different conversations to all new heights and all new realms. So Shaq, um, with such an amazing background, with such great, great achievements, I love how you recently shared, and of course, we know each other long enough, but when we started to get to know each other um, in a more authentic way was when you started to share what wasn't working in your life. And he said, despite all that I've just read out, you generally had this emotional volatility. You had no idea of the impact of your emotions on yourself and others. And also being the only child, you found it quite difficult to be by yourself and struggle to be alone. So I'd love for you to get into that because Emotional volatility is probably something every single person can relate to. I don't know a single human being that I have ever come across who experiences steady state emotion um, for, forget, you know, longer periods, but even within a day. And so please share what that was like for you, how it impacted you. Yeah, so um, for all the accolades, thank you for, for mentioning that. I. I always found it, um, I, I was always in an interesting space because I felt there was almost like two sides to me. There was like a cool, calm shack that everyone knew, right? And like, you know, the you know fun loving, kind of energetic, does all this kind of, you know, like Machu Picchu training, you know, and all the rest. However, when I was at home, when I was on my own, I couldn't really cope with my own self. I just didn't know how to deal with myself. Um, and I found it really difficult to be on my own for uh, any set length of time. So, you know, kind of if it was a week or two weeks. I'd actually really struggle with that to the point where I would, I, I couldn't deal with being at home alone, right? Um, and I found that my emotions got the better of me and I really struggled to the point where actually I would, sometimes being tears and breaking down that I couldn't cope. I just had no outlet. Um, on top of that, the emotional volatility stuff. So um, I would always find that, like work was a great example. So as a director of kind of three businesses, um, my team knew my emotions before I even recognized them. So I'd walk in one day and I'd be like, where, where is everyone? I'd be like, they're all, wow. where, where's my team gone, right? right. And like some of the people that knew me better, they were like, Shaq, you're purple today. And I'm like, I'm not purple, like purple minion, right? So um, they say, you're angry today. I'm like, I'm not angry. And I'm like, no, you're angry today. I'm like, I'm not angry. You're angry today. I'm not angry. <laughs> so, um, and actually they were all hide, like hiding and staying away from me because they could sense my emotions before I'd even realized it. Um, 
and almost there was that almost Jekyll and Hyde kind of thing. Most of the people on the outside knew that. However, people that started to get to know me, you know, a bit better would see that I would struggle with some of that. And I would have really good days. And then sometimes I'd have really bad ones or I'd just clam up and be inside my own shell. And that happened for years. Please go on. I was just going to ask you, uh, the emotional bit at home, what age was that? So, um, Probably, well, I mean, being an only child, um, I mean, I did have a brother, but he, he passed away. He couldn't, um, you know, he, he was only around for about three months and then mum couldn't have children again. So, you know, I spent a lot of time at home like by myself. So mum and dad had to work during the summers. I was by myself. I could deal with that bit, um, you know, kind of at school and stuff. I, I was OK. You know, there was always homework to be done and all the rest of it. Right? Yeah. So, that that would keep me occupied but it was when I started to kind of get a bit older so yeah I went through university I I went away from university for three years I came back and I started to find that again like I needed people around me yeah, at mm. university you have people around you all the time yeah. right yeah. but after university I'd come back and I you know re-entry into the house was fun it's, it's just me mom and dad so you know the, the normal things that you go through at university, you know, and when you come back home, who are you going out with? When are you coming back? All the rest of it right. was fun. Right. But then actually when I didn't have that, mom, mom and dad were on holiday, for example, and I was by myself, right. and two or three days in, I didn't like being by myself. Yeah. Got and it. I found that my, um, my mind just went off into really dark, deep places, which, you know, I found really struggled. I really struggled with that, um, you know, kind of really weird thoughts. I would just like, you know, of, yeah, I, I just couldn't deal with being alone. Got it. And with the emotional volatility, you talk about the work, the impact at work and how colleagues would, well, of course, it would undoubtedly impact, I guess, performance and productivity of the day if your team has kind of left your vicinity to avoid uh, the impact of Shaq's anger. Was there any other impact you had on any other social circle or social dynamic? Um, so I suppose with uh, kind of friends and family, I would then start to keep them at arm's length. When it when I was in one of those spaces, I would mm. just kind of stay away from them, right? Um, right? Just so that actually I knew that I wouldn't be, you know, in a place where that could erupt, right? Got it. But then that then meant that I was you know, away from everyone and I was being again by myself. Um, right. uh, and, you know, then the thoughts kind of come into your head that you are alone in this world. There's, you know, like, how are you going to go forward in this world? How is life going to be? What's going to be like when your parents leave? You know, um, and they will at some point. Obviously, they'll, they'll um, you know, they'll, they'll pass on at some point. We don't live forever. You know, yeah. how are you going to live life, right? How is that going to go on? So all those kind of future thoughts came in as well. So that's so great. And I just want to um, highlight here for the audience something that's so keen what you're sharing, which is we may have the most uh, glamorous, appealing uh, job, business, life, family, parents, everything. Um, and yet we have this inner, what we call inner demons in our healthy relationships program, which is this fear of being alone or fear of not belonging and then keeping ourselves constantly surrounded by people to not have to experience that is something that we often aren't aware of because we drown out those emotions with our lifestyle, with the busyness, with our social life, with just whatever habits. And the anger that Shaq talks about, what we learn in our program, is... It's kind of the smoke screen. People think that anger is the issue, but anger is just a secondary reaction to that very young age conversation, that young age wound, which is what we call it, of feeling like we don't belong, of not wanting to be alone or feeling like we're alone or we don't matter or we're not important or not loved. So Shaq, um, with all of that going on in the background, when you did join the Healthy Relationships Program, what did you really get to learn newly about yourself or what was your biggest aha moment or moments? And how did you get to deal with this aspect of Shaq's Shaq existence, the emotional volatility? Yeah. And, and actually, just on that, what I what I did come to realize is that I had facets to my personality. Um, and right. that actually in different groups of people, 
I'd have a different way of being, right? So a lot of my friend circles didn't mix because I would then be a different person in each one. So university friends and like that kind of group, I'd be the big party. <laughs> but I was a DJ at university, so I had that personality. Um, if you know, you know, but uh, you'll know my DJ name. Uh, but, you know. Uh, <laughs> All right, I got to Google that now. <laughs> <laughs> you probably find it, right? Um, um, but it, it was a cheesy one, right? Um, uh, and um, basically, you know, they had that and then like family I was I had a different kind of persona and actually I think that's one of the things that the HR program really helped me to kind of understand that actually there's only one me and actually yeah. being in you know like those different facets actually I was you know kind of people pleasing because that's what I thought they wanted to see and I wasn't being true to myself. I wasn't being truly authentic in my own heart. And I wasn't being me. Um, I was playing up to what I thought they wanted me to be like. Uh, oh, that's amazing. Being... You're myself in that. And I think without a doubt, everybody can relate to that. I had so many categories of people, but not just physically. Even when Facebook came into existence, I had filters of all those categories, who can see what about me and my life, because we think we're private, but we're not, we're constantly just afraid of people's judgments that we put all these different layers of barriers around us. Yeah. Uh, and, and I, and I can relate like a hundred percent to exactly what you said and therefore not bring different groups together because I don't want those people to see my crazy ass side versus my colleagues who just see my super onto it, geek mode on, get job done, or like get my project done or get the research done and then, you know, and out of there. And do you know what? I actually found it really unnerving. If, for example, there was a birthday and I was like, oh, I've got this friend from this group coming in with these guys. Uh, how's that going? You know, and I actually found, like, instead of enjoying the moment, I'd find that really, like, unnerving, right? What yeah. are they going to think about me? What are they going to think about that? And that was you know, not a great way to kind of be with my friends and my family, right? So um, that that was one of the big things that I learned in HR, that actually it is just me, you know, and I yeah. am, I've got to be true to myself every time, in every, social, in every social situation or family situation or whatever, because that's the only way to live, right? Um, you know, there's no point in trying to hide things or whatever. And, you know, that may have its you know, casualties, there may be people that don't agree with that, but actually if they don't, then that was a facet that they saw and I may not have been true to myself at that point. If they don't like that, okay, well, then they don't need to stay as a friend, right? Um, but I think actually I didn't have many casualties of, you know, like friends. I think actually people accepted the fact that I was being true to myself and actually appreciated it. Amazing. So with you having discovered that version of yourself, which is or rather with you getting connected to the fact that all of those different versions are Shaq, and then how do you get to show up as your entire self in every room? How did that, coming to today's topic, impact your dating life? And uh, of course, today's topic is from dating to wedding, a decade-long journey. So tell me all about that, and how did your discovery of who Shaq is and then how you shifted the way you showed up impact your dating life? So uh, I've been with our partner now 10 years and um, we kind of met, met each other at work and we were together for a number of years. Now, um, I got, I was in a place where she's uh, Hindu and I, I'm Muslim um, and I got very stuck in the, I told my parents in three weeks after we started dating, this is the girl I'm going to marry. And I was that convinced. Um, it took her a lot longer to tell her parents. She uh, was very fearful of the fact that she might get disowned, which, you know, is, I understand is a very yeah. real thing. Yeah. And I went through, like, my parents knowing and all the rest of it for about eight years, nine years, we went through this journey of going up and down, like, you know, are we going to break up or are we not, you know? Um, and I kept on rolling out that narrative of, I told my parents in three weeks, you need to tell your parents, right? Mm -hmm. And that became, 
really difficult. We found, I found that actually I could only have a conversation with her maybe two or three times a year about how we're going to move our life forward um, mm. because of the fear that she's just going to break down crying and I'm going to have to deal with that. And she's going to have to deal with all the emotion. And so actually that then impacted the fact that, you know, we saw each other at work, um, but actually we didn't date a huge amount, you know, because yeah. actually <laughs> she actually says it today. She goes, I'm so surprised we're going on a date and you're not asking me the question, when are you going to tell your parents, right? <laughs> so, yeah, she's actually like, she said that a few times now. Um, uh, but actually that's where the date would normally end um, yeah so, you know, that enjoyment of the date didn't then happen and so that impacted that um, so again I was standing in kind of fear of losing her I didn't yeah. want to lose her um, you know she but we didn't really have like you know I think we, we both knew that we wanted to get married to each other but we were kind of stuck we didn't yeah. know how to go or where to go um and through this journey like to make it easier like my parents knew and then there were times at which they didn't know because it made it easier for them to uh not know that we were dating by yeah. the way my mum has already said I'm gonna watch the interview with you right? so yeah. probably gonna, I'm probably gonna hi auntie <laughs> I'm probably gonna hear it as well afterwards right at some point like, what that's fine <laughs> we're buddies I can catch her up separately too <laughs> <laughs> exactly right um but yeah so um you know there were times at which I just I, I said I'm not dating her anymore yeah. yeah and actually that went on for a little while um so yeah, that's that's kind of where we got to. Um, and then I started the HR course uh, and started to realize that I it wasn't just her that was stuck. I was stuck um, in that whole narrative of, you know, I'm she I, I was playing victim, basically. Right. Yeah. That she was like, um, you know, like it's your fault that you haven't told your parents and that's why we're not moving on but that's affecting me so I'm the victim here you know yeah. and actually that impacted everything we did and I didn't realize I was doing it for years um, and I made it her fault yeah which I look back at that and I go you know I, I've I'm sorry I did that that's not the way it should have been right um, but I had no other point of reference I had no other way of dealing with it I didn't know how else to to approach this but actually that's what the HR course then started to open up for me that actually I wasn't being authentic um, and it took a conversation in a car that, <laughs> uh, with uh, with yourself right um, to really shine light on the fact that I was being inauthentic I was asking her to be honest with her parents and at that moment in time I wasn't being honest with my own because my parents didn't know at that point yeah that I was still dating her you know that's so first of all you sharing that is so courageous I want to just acknowledge you pause and acknowledge you for that right because there's so much in there Shaq I just want to unpack a little which is we're not trained or taught anywhere to really, really, really shine the mirror on ourselves, right? So to shine the mirror on ourselves and really look at why is our life the way it is? And then secondly, we're just so conditioned to believe with every cell in our body that if something's not working here, then surely there's something external that hasn't worked because we've completely, well, you know, externalized our self-worth in our job titles, in our grades, in our relationship status, in our parents' approval. And so it's not a shack phenomenon, right, for everybody listening in that he did this with his partner and blamed his partner and said, oh, because of you, our relationship isn't moving forward and it's been eight, nine plus years. Every single human being does that, right? Every single human being will externalize their problems. It was their fault. Because we don't have access, we don't have education, we don't have the tools to look within to say, how can I be responsible? Now, not responsible in terms of blame and make wrong and I'm the villain, no, but responsible in, I am the creator of my life. And if I'm the creator of my life, then 
how is what I'm experiencing here a mirror reflection of my internal world or a projection of my thoughts, my belief systems, my past actions manifesting to this very moment? And I think uh, kudos to you for being so willing to really pause and look within Shaq in that memorable a uh, long car drive from Brecon Beacons back to London um, where you did take ownership of it because many, many, many people don't because it's easier and more comfortable to still blame the other. And what we call, we call this the victim consciousness and you heard Shaq using the word victim. And that's what it is, right? We, we go through four levels of consciousness on our programs. And so we're not gonna tell you, you will have a better future. We don't work horizontally. We work with you right now in this present moment and upgrade your consciousness vertically, right? You get to a different level of consciousness and you shift from this habitual, I got the short end of the stick, life's happening to me, it's unfair, I'm unlucky, they did this to me too. Really like raise your consciousness to everything is happening for me. It's all a learning journey about myself. And I love Shaq that you got to really see it's not just your partner who's saying or not saying what you want her to or what would be ideal for her to say to her parents, but there's an inauthenticity, there's a disconnect, there's a way Shaq showing up at home with his family that is an honor, what it is you stand for, right? And, uh, and then that has its own impact and it, it would impact your date and your conversations and bring the stagnation and tears and just the tension there, right? Where it just became, where it came down to a work relationship, even though there was that love and connectedness there. So, so what was the biggest, with that awareness, what was your, your follow-up actions? Like what did breakthroughs really look like for you? So uh, that conversation in the car was, you know, um, and actually it was a great conversation, but it was probably one of the toughest I've ever had in my life, right? being coached yeah. to that level. But it was great that I had some of the tools that I had from HR. I was halfway through the HR program at that point. So actually working through it to understand that actually my way of showing up right now yeah. was actually a lot of the issue. And yeah. when I can change my way of showing up in at home and with her, actually we can start to make a shift in what happens and you know that it was oh we we I think we got back to you know London around four or five o'clock and you know uh I went home and I remember I remember you saying to me so uh, like halfway through the car conversation you were like so where are your parents you know you, you you called me out on it right and it was like well one second you're asking her parents you know you're asking her to tell her parents you haven't told your parents you need to tell your parents to kind of clear that and be authentic, right? And, you know, because you're not being honest, right? That you're you're doing that, it doesn't work. When you, where are your parents right now? They're like, I'm hoping they're not at home. <laughs> I remember that. I remember that. <laughs> and I was like, oh God, right? Because I know where this is going. Um, but actually that evening, uh, I had a conversation with my parents uh, and it was an uncomfortable one because yeah. I, I sat there and you know kind of admitted look I've been going out with her for quite a while and I just haven't told you um, and they appreciated the honesty I think they found it difficult to hear but actually you know it kind of cleared the way and I said to them that this is you know it is going to happen we're going to make this happen and it's my way of showing up and I'm owning my situation how I show up that will then start to cause shifts, hopefully the right way. Um, and actually about three days later, I went and had a very similar conversation with my partner too. Um, and we then, you know, I said, look, I need to shift the way that I've been showing up and that narrative I'm not gonna use anymore because actually it doesn't apply. So, yeah. you know, straight away, she was like, at the, at the end of it, you know, we, we were there, um, you know, near her house in a restaurant. And she was like, this is the best conversation we've ever had in 10 years. Wow. And I was like, wow. okay, wow, right, okay. Well, you know, she goes, it's like by far the best conversation we've had. So I was like, okay, so obviously something has worked right here. Um, and then uh, it took 
you know, so that that was a big shift. And then actually our relationships just started to to go really well, actually. It just felt like we could be a lot more open with each other and go from there. Um, then I think the next bit that then happened is she actually had a conversation uh, with yourself and she's not been any on any kind of uh, kind of coaching program before or anything. And three days later, you know, her parents kind of found out that we're, we're together uh, and the parents were told, um, which was stunning. Um, yeah. And I don't, I still don't know the context of the conversation and that's, that's between yourselves, obviously, right? Um, but whatever that conversation was, um, well, I'm getting married in two months, right? So this happened. Exactly. In- obviously <laughs> went really well. <laughs> yeah, it did, right? I have a wedding <laughs> invite in my inbox. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? Well, that's so- amazing. And you know, yeah. Shaq, I want to just fl- flag here for people listening in. Shaq didn't get lucky, just to clarify. Right? Shaq didn't get lucky. And uh, nor did his partner get lucky, nor did the parents get lucky. There's no luck in this conversation. It's 100% intentionality. As long as you're operating from, they're the problem, they're to blame, they're the source of my misery. God, if only they got their act together, we would finally have some joy. That energy is so toxic in relationships, people don't realize it. And when we can 100% stand in, I'm going to choose to stand in love. Everything shifts. You know, what you just said, which for some, may it may just be a passing remark, but really it's gold, which is for your partner to say, this is the best conversation we've had in 10 years. It's not because of the words. It's because of who Shaq showed up as, your internal state. An attitude dictates the state of events. When your internal state is coming from such purity and a place of love, then everything will just mirror that without a doubt, right? So it's just, it's remarkable. And you know what, Shaq? I used to think our dating story was long because it was eight years and Ronnie took forever to propose. But heck, there's longer periods. (laughs) There's longer timelines now that we can cite and reference. But it's it's amazing. And the wedding's in two months' time. And uh, knowing your mom so well and just seeing how everything's unfolding, it really is being grounded in a space of love, in you owning your life, right? So fast forward to life after the program, Shaq. Of course, the wedding's happening now in two months' time, which is just awesome. And I'm going to have all the viewers and everybody uh, join me in sending you the greatest blessings, your you. just abundance and love your way. So you guys just constantly grow um, together with such love, joy, and peace. Beyond your your dating life, where else have you seen shifts happen? Because Shaq started to own his life. Everywhere. Like, it's it's incredible where things have gone. So, you know, again, like in my work life, I'm feeling a lot more balanced. Uh, I've just kind of left the, the stores I was in um, and I've moved to somewhere a lot, lot closer to home. Um, and that has been a massive, massive transformation for me. Um, you know, and it's taken a lot of work to get there, but even in that space, just in my workspace, I feel like I can be who I am. I didn't have to put on the... I'm director Shaq kind of thing, right? I can be who I am, right? And I think people respond to it a lot better. They're not hiding anymore, which is good. (laughs) (laughs) They're not hiding anymore. Um, You know, but even just with family and, you know, friends, I'm feeling, you know, me being much more authentic, me being true to myself and owning my own life, I have much better conversations, much more, involved much more kind of aware conversation with people and I'm really connecting to people so much more so than at the superficial levels I was at before you know which you know and I enjoy that that's so much better I've you know like I don't need to be the I, I always used to want to be like yeah I'm the party person I'm the center of the party right and then actually you realize that those connections tend to actually be quite superficial Whereas now I'm creating much deeper connection with people. You know, there could be a party going on, but I'm sat with that person and I'm talking to that person and everything else doesn't matter because I'm there and I'm with them. And that has really changed a lot of my conversations with people and therefore my connections and my relatedness to them. 
Oh my God. Shaq, I really feel like I'm hearing myself talk because um, that was so <laughs> my first, I would say my life until I I was 30, which was being the center of attention, having a spotlight on me, being the life of the party, being the, the person who was first on dance floor, last one off, you know, favorite, like everything. Um, and it's such a, we don't even do it intentionally. It's a subconscious survival coping mechanism to just belong or the yearning to belong because in the absence of that has us feel like we don't belong, right? And we don't realize it. And we could be like Shaq owns three businesses, right? He's just so accomplished across so many different ways. And yet there's that emotional fracture. And so you could have everything professionally, intellectually that the society thinks is great. But if you're not addressing and dealing your emotion, dealing with and shining light on your emotional volatilities, the roller coaster rides, they're not normal. They're not okay to tolerate. You've got to bring attention to them. And if you're not, then you doing yourself the greatest disservice. And when I exactly like you, Shaq, I, I can hear myself in your narrative. And it's very much aligned with everybody who's on this path of doing the inner work and causing a shift. Because once we start getting connected to our authentic self, we have the freedom to speak to anybody in the most loving way as if we're speaking to them like our best friends. I can have a conversation with somebody in the lift. Um, and I don't have to be, hey, and, and all of that, I could just, it could be a 30 second conversation, but coming from such a place of just true authenticity, there's warmth and connectedness in that moment. So Shaq, um, this has been so, so, so great. I could talk to you forever. And, uh, and viewers, you know, um, I really invite you guys to look at where are you currently tolerating suboptimal relationships? Where are you currently tolerating suboptimal reasons? blaming others, tolerating just emotional frustration, wherever it is, consider you don't have to, you actually have education platforms and the Healthy Relationships Program is one of them. I run them, they're 10 week programs. The next one's starting on May 25th. Message me, DM me, we'll put the link to the program on this live, but get invested in yourself, get involved in enhancing yourself because nobody else is going to do it. So you're either going to stay in a victim narrative and you could spend decades there, like we've just heard with Shaq in his journey, but heck, everybody's had this journey. We have 60 year old people who come on our program because they've run the same victim narratives about their partners, their in-laws, their kids, their neighbors, their siblings for years. Life doesn't have to be that way. And you're most certainly not born to live that way. So if you're ready for a breakthrough, messages i'm going to share the link let's get you on the next program and here's to unleashing your freest happiest most grounded self and by happy i don't mean you're jumping and bouncing off walls like an energizer bunny you're just you're experiencing stillness and calmness and connectedness in your relationships so shack i really want to just on behalf of everybody listening in and uh personally say a massive 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 um Firstly, congratulations on the upcoming wedding. Well done for having the conversation and owning your life finally, right? And uh, just congratulations on the business shifting, on the relationship shifting. Thank you for sharing your narrative, your transformational story here, and just inspiring the numerous lives that are going to watch this for however long Facebook keeps this on. So big hugs and loads Thank of love. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.